In the 1950s, the development of positive pressure ventilators extended the lives of people who would have otherwise died, prompting the discussion of whether people with no discernible brain function should be treated, posing the question of if such patients could be ethically declared dead. Around the same time, it became possible to successfully transplant organs, and even more discussions were had. This time, they surrounded the ethics of removing organs from a person who is brain dead but still has a beating heart while on a ventilator. At the end of the 1960s, committees around the world recommended definitions for brain death, permitting optimal conditions for organ procurement without clinician, moral, or legal responsibility for the patient's death. By the 1980s, the U.S. adopted the Uniform Determination of Death Act, or UDDA, which legally established a neurological definition of death as an irreversible cessation of all functions of the entire brain, including the brainstem. Although these laws make a hard distinction between dead and alive, it can be difficult to definitively determine that all brain and brainstem function has ceased. Consequently, the actual process of declaring brain death is detailed, but also ensures patients are truly dead when making the diagnosis. Although it may take time to complete a properly conducted brain death examination, the diagnosis allows families to have closure. And, making a brain death declaration before questions about organ donation are asked allows families to feel the decision about organ donation is not a choice that affects their loved one's survival. The American Academy of Neurology, or AAN, has published guidelines on how to conduct a brain death examination, aiming to standardize the process across the country in all hospitals by all physicians. They recommend all examinations be performed with the premise that the patient is alive and that loved ones are clearly informed about the patient's condition. They may even watch the examination to help them understand that their loved one's condition is irreversible. Each situation is unique and requires trust and compassion throughout the process. The AAN outlines four stages to declaring a person brain dead. Prerequisites, examination, apnea testing, and ancillary testing. If any condition is unmet in the first three stages, ancillary testing must be performed. First, prerequisites must be met to ensure there is no possible reversible reason for the person's unresponsiveness. These requirements include knowing and validating the cause of the irreversible coma is not a result of medications or therapies that mask neurological response to testing. No illicit drugs, toxins, or paralytic medications may remain in the body, so there can be confidence that any lack of responsiveness is not due to a medication, but is indeed the person's state of being. A person cannot have any severe abnormalities in body chemical composition, body temperature, or blood pressure. And the individual must be mechanically ventilated. Second, a physical examination must be performed to check that all brainstem reflexes and responses to stimuli are absent. For instance, pupils shouldn't constrict in response to light, and when stimulating the pharynx, the person shouldn't cough. Third, when possible, apnea testing must be conducted to ensure the person has no respiratory activity when the ventilator is removed, exhibiting loss of respiratory function. Prior to starting this test, the individual must be stable on the ventilator and pre-oxygenated. The patient should then be completely removed from the ventilator for a period of time. They should not spontaneously begin breathing. The carbon dioxide level should rise and must reach a level of at least 60 and be greater than 20 above the starting CO2 level. The apnea test may be aborted if the patient develops cardiopulmonary instability. Finally, if any condition from the first three stages was unmet, ancillary testing must be conducted. Ancillary testing consists of additional tests to confirm that there is no blood flow in the brain and may include a cerebral angiogram, cerebral scintigraphy with technetium, also called cerebral blood flow, and or transcranial Doppler ultrasonography, or a test to confirm that there is no electrical activity in the brain called electroencephalography. If all test conditions are met, a physician may declare death and document time of death. To date, no one who has ever been correctly diagnosed regained consciousness or breathed without a ventilator.
The decision to make a declaration of brain death is at the discretion of the physician and hospital. By following the outlined state, hospital, and OPO guidelines, a clinician can be confident in their diagnosis.